Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Gavin Lockyer from Arafura. How are you today? I'm well, thanks, Tracy. Thanks for having us again. Well, I'll be honest with you. I'm very excited about this uh, interview. I mean, we have a lot going on in the news right now between China and the United States, and of course now Canada and China. And that's making the world look to you for neodymium and presidium in Australia. Is that correct, or am I jumping to the wrong conclusions? Well, it's it's starting. We're starting to see some uh, movement in that space. Um, Geopolitical. Political issues typically um, uh, reflect or are reflected into a an increase in the neodymium praseodymium price. So the, you know we'd hope to hope to see that in the in the near future. Um, but uh, what we're seeing also is that there's a slight increase from North American uh, investors and manufacturers in particular uh, starting to look up their procurement supply chains. Uh, to see where are the critical metals being uh, sourced from, and and what can they do to minimise their uh, risk of uh, supply disruption. And for those of you out there who may not be familiar with how exciting the magnetic material market actually is, the critical material market is. I'm going to ask you, Gavin, if you don't mind, just to give us a quick overview and re-review of who Arafura is uh, in this market. Sure. Look, we're a developing uh, project. Uh, we sit in Central Australia, so in terms of political risk, uh, we represent uh, a very low risk jurisdiction. Uh, our process is to mine, develop, uh, process uh, rare earth materials in Central Australia, and then export uh, NDPR or neodymium praseodymium oxides uh, into the metal and magnet uh, manufacturing uh, industry, which typically sits offshore in places like uh, Japan. Uh, to a lesser extent, Korea, predominantly China, and uh, you know the U.S. is uh, definitely getting a, a a growing interest in this as it's a strategic metal that feeds into uh, high-performance uh, magnets, as you've rightly alluded to, which drive electric uh, electric motors and uh, also a, a range of defence applications. And of course, Gavin, what you've just alluded to, we did a piece about how the U.S. defense law has market eyeing uh, raw materials sources in Australia. Have you seen uh, any additional phone calls from any military sources, of course, here in the last uh, month? What can you talk about? Um, there's not a lot I can talk about, but I, what, I, what I can say is that there's certainly interest um, uh, coming from from both sides of the of the Pacific, to be honest, um, the Australian government obviously has made uh, a, a range of public announcements uh, in which uh, it uh, endorses uh, Australian resource and uh, critical metals and materials uh, for its allies, and of course the U.S. is and is an important ally as is Canada. So um, we would expect, uh, whilst we have had some discussions at Canberra and at Washington level. Um, what I'd really like to see is some of those um, uh, industries that are reliant on the NDPR for their um, for their um, for their businesses actually start to come and talk to us a little bit more in a little bit more meaningful capacity. Because as you're well aware, Tracy, the NDPR market isn't uh, a commodity market. Uh, there's not an LME in which it's traded, and so for us to get our projects up and running, uh, we need. Uh, Offtake um, contracts, which are defendable or are bankable, basically, uh, and so that we need those those organisations that are well known uh, throughout the world to come and talk to us about uh, meaningful offtake discussions, so that we can get our financing underway. Well, and and obviously this is extremely timely. But for all of you scientists out there as well, Arafura has uh, competitive advantages with your rare earth processing uh, technology. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, look, for the last uh, couple of years, we've been uh, piloting our, our process at a significant scale. Uh, this has been in, in conjunction and discussions with our lead feasibility study engineer, Hatch. And uh, so we've been uh, doing various uh, unit operations there's seven in total. We've just completed number six. Uh, but as you've alluded to, it's a, it's a very important step because uh, as far as we're aware, nowhere else in the world is the cerium removed uh, um, from the rest of the rare earths ahead of the final separation. And whilst this is, uh, can get quite technical, 
the, the upside to it is, is the fact that we're removing a, a high volume, low value material uh, from the rest of the rare earths, which then go into subsequent solvent extraction processing, which can be quite expensive. So we hope that we get a, a cost a competitive advantage here, um, but also uh, we think that we've got some technology here that might be useful for, um, for other processes uh, or, or um, future processes as they're developing their own, uh, their own projects. And maybe you can talk to that for just a second. So for those of you unfamiliar with rare earths uh, watching this interview presently, the Chinese control almost exclusively the processing of these magnetic materials. So can you talk a little bit more about you know, how this might provide additional sustainability and competitive advantages for any technology company and, and would be interesting to any country around the world? Sure. Look, I think no one supplier or one, one customer wants to be beholden to, uh, to one country or one, or one producer. So whether it be China dominating the market or the US or Australia, I think end customers want diversification across their supply chain. So uh, at the moment, uh, there's only one other project outside of China of any real substance that is uh, producing material, and that's obviously Linus, uh, who mine in Australia and uh, process in Malaysia. Uh, and I think the volume of Arrowfura's material in terms of the size of the resource, the, um, the length of time, uh, which we've got a life of mine of at least uh, 30 years, um, the tier one jurisdiction in terms of uh, sovereign risk being in Australia, I think that positions Arrowfura nicely to feed into a growing market where there is limited supply. Um, and growing demand through uh, electric vehicle applications. So in terms of our competitive advantage, whilst uh, some of our cost structures might be a little bit higher because we're doing it in a tier one jurisdiction and therefore we've got a little bit more regulatory um, uh, paperwork and, and red tape to get through, I think in the long term uh, our customers will want not just uh, stewardship over their supply chain but also they'll want to understand how we are managing our waste products and how we're dealing with our environmental and social license to operate issues. And we can prove all of that because we've received both federal government and Northern Territory government uh, environmental approval. So that's a distinct advantage we feel. So with just recently announcing the successful operations of Nolan's phase six pilot plant, and you're talking about working on, you know, having meaningful discussions with offtake potential partners presently. Can you tell us what your shareholders should be looking forward to besides everybody's looking at Australia right now with, you know, help us with our critical materials, what we might be looking forward to in the next quarter or two? Sure. Look, um, we've just finished a share purchase plan, which, uh, you know, I thank all our shareholders for again supporting the company. Um, you know, we have copped some criticism in the past for being too methodical and uh, and uh, constantly piloting, but that's been the, as a result of the feedback we receive from investors in the marketplace that have seen um, commissioning issues in other plants um, and, and just from general feedback. So we hope that uh, by being patient and by stepping through these processes, including our piloting activities, that we can uh, de-risk the process, the project uh, when we actually go to construct and commission. So 2019 is uh, gearing up to be a really big one for Arafira. Uh, we'll complete our feasibility study in the first quarter of next year and that obviously will then uh, assist us in securing offtake arrangements and, and ultimately project financing so that we can lead into uh, construction, commissioning and full-time production. So a really big 2019 ahead for, for us and our shareholders and, and uh, the, the world more widely. Okay, well, Gavin, I'll tell you, we'd like to see you in interviews more often. I'm just going to take this opportunity to say this in this interview. And thank you so much for updating us today. No problem, Tracy. Thanks very much for having me.